Hey everyone, it's JPC again, and this is episode number nine of Back in My Day. This week I want to do a little bit of a lore dump. Um, I actually got a comment about uh, maybe the story behind how I got into Valorant um, and or kind of gaming in general. And I figured that would be a good opportunity to um, go into some details about how I met Wahujin. Um, became a subscriber of Wahujin's and how Boomer to Diamond started and what the next steps are. So kind of uh, topical because I hit Diamond this week and now Boomer to Diamond is technically over and we're going to start doing After Hours. So kind of works out. If you're enjoying the content, uh, please like, subscribe, comment. Um, uh, helps out the, the, the podcast a little bit and uh, gives me a little virtual pat on the back as well. Um, also, always uh, comment and give feedback. Um, I'd like to know if there are other lure uh, drops you would like to hear about. And I'll sift through those and see which ones um, are easy enough to do or if I feel have you know some type of merit to them um, and go from there. Um, yeah. So thank you for hanging out and let's uh, get started. So let's talk about how I got into gaming, I guess. Um, so I'm, I'm 40 and back when I was, I guess, five or six, uh, Mario Brothers had come out. So yeah, we're going to go way back on this one, guys. Um, so I am actually, uh, I have a brother, we're twins. And my brother and I used to play uh, Mario Brothers. Um, and I remember like my earliest memories of video games was uh, I wasn't when I was playing. It was only when my, when my brother was playing. Uh, whenever he would jump, uh, I would kick. I was sitting on the couch and I was kicking my feet in the air when he would jump um, to, you know, avoid the whatever, the Goombas or the Turtles or whatever. Um, and... I actually don't know if, if he did it as well whenever I was playing. I didn't kick when I played, but I only kicked when I watched. And uh, from there, um, we just started buying video games. Like we just we really enjoyed playing Mario Brothers. And I'll be honest, I can't remember if we ever beat that game um, or any of the other future Mario Brothers. I don't remember finishing Mario to be to be uh, completely honest, but. We moved on. We played tons of other games. Uh, it was a Double Dragon. Um, I remember beating Double Dragon. We played Contra. Um, a bunch of those style games I think we were more into. A um, little bit of shooters and, and type of things. I think they're arguably all kind of the same game style. But um, uh, Contra was... I remember early, early on really, really liking Contra. And all that was on Nintendo, um, uh, of course. You know, Mario and whatnot. I never played um, Atari, I don't believe. I don't think we ever got an Atari. But played Nintendo and uh, went through the Nintendo phase. And then when Sega came out, we uh, switched over to Sega solely. I remember playing Sonic early on. Um, and going from there, and my brother and I early on also, like we, we played sports. Um, we were in little league and you, you name it, you name the sport. We probably did it. Um, but we used to play, it was, uh, blades of steel was, uh, again, I think it was a Sega game. I'm actually going to look these up while we're, while we're talking. Um, it's a little bit of a ad hoc. Yeah. Blades of steel was Nintendo. So that was one of the Nintendo games that we played. I remember playing that game, um, smashing the puck through the ice behind the, uh, the goalie. Um, they had injuries, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, so we played sports games, which, which I was leading into on the Sega side. We played uh, the Tecmo Super Bowl. Like, we loved those games. Um, uh, Tecmo Bowl, Te Tecmo Super Bowl, we, we played those games. And so... Um, in all actuality, the, the majority of, of my gaming life has been um, actually playing sports games. Um, never considered shooters and um, MOBAs. I never considered those to be um, 
something I would put time into because I already played sports. I physically played sports. So the thing that I got uh, excited about or focused on was, was sports video games. Um, you could kind of do those, you know, make your own, make yourself in the game and play the game and whatnot. And, and, you know, all the way up through the Madden games and the 2K sports games and all those, um, those uh, ended up always being kind of uh, the the focus of the of the sport games. Sport games, and my bro- my brother and I, we always played uh, those games together. Um, we never played against each other either. It was always a you know let's play on the the uh, the dual screen or whatever, and we were always on the same team. That kind of was what uh, what we enjoyed about those games. Um, and then. I want to say it was it was Call of Duty. It was Modern Warfare. I think it was the 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 first Modern Warfare. Um, no, I have to back up. It was before that. So my brother and I, when we graduated uh, high school, that was the year two thousand. For those keeping track, um, there was this little kind of internet cafe um, type of place in um, Florida where we're from, and it was called Off Limits, and we were playing. Uh, Counter Strike. I don't remember which one. I I don't remember if it was global. I don't remember. I don't remember which one. But it was in two thousand. So, um, around that time. Um, but my brother and I, when we played it, it was always. Uh, I remember Vertigo. I don't remember all the maps at all, but I remember Vertigo because when you started on the second floor, you could go through the little. Uh, it was like a little hole there, and. If you were fast enough, you could get people while they were still buying, and we would just every game we would just jump down and we would just start trying to knife people um in their spawn on whatever again. I don't remember if we were c t u if we were t side but I remember playing those games, and again, like we never played we never played to get better, we were purely just trying to do the most obnoxious things and um that was when, you know, like hacks were and everything were rampant. People were doing all kinds of things and uh, it ended up not being fun very quickly um, to us because, again, we weren't playing to be competitive. We were we were playing to have fun, uh, but that only lasted like, again, a couple months. Like we would, you know, work and then take 20 bucks in and play for a couple hours and um, then go back to work and try to make more money, right? Like it was one of those things where, again, it was – that was our first kind of exposure to like first person shooters, um, which again was a lot of fun. I, like, I, I don't, I, I, I loved, I loved doing what we did. Um, that's all we ever cared about was trying to knife people. It was, it was so much fun. Um, that led to eventually uh, Call of Duty, which we only played on PlayStation because we were, we were a PlayStation family, um, my brother and I. Uh, I actually don't think I've ever owned an xbox yeah i don't believe i've ever owned an xbox i think i only owned playstations and uh so yeah we played we played console call of duty and they had team deathmatch right so you didn't have to play the i think it's called search and destroy on on call of duty um that was the comparable version of of the counter-strike or the valorant structured game we never really played um search and destroy if we ever did it was like a one-off but we we only played Team deathmatch, and we would fucking buy shotguns and sit in small areas and just annoy people. Again, we were we we were those guys. Yeah, we were. Um, yeah, we weren't playing competitively. We were just playing to have fun and do meanie shit. Um, without regard for you know what was our KD or how many you know team death matches did we win in a row or or what was our win percentage. You know, none of that. None of that mattered. Actually, never was something that crossed our minds to even track or monitor or um, pay attention to. Um, as a matter of fact, like we enjoyed camping, not because we wanted to. Yeah, I know. I know you're all rolling your eyes right now. I, yeah, I'm a camper. I was a camper, um, but we weren't looking to win. We were purely doing it to annoy people. It was it was pure um, making people mauled and. It's just because we weren't taking the game seriously at all, like I said. So, and we went all the way through. Like I remember playing Black Ops. Um, Claymores were the best thing ever made in a Call of Duty game. Um, the camping 
was rampant with claymores. Like, it, oh, I loved it so much. Uh, thank you, you know, for ever putting that in a game. I'm sad when they took it out. Um, uh, and then went through, you know, the the other the other levels. And I can't remember what it was. I don't think it was Modern Warfare. It might have been, but where they started adding like the exosuits, and you could do all kinds of like, yeah, that that was that was about the point where I was like, this has turned into. Um, I'm not going to start trying to track people running on walls. Um, so that was about the time we stopped playing. I stopped playing Call of Duty. I think my brother still played um, beyond that. So around that time, um, I can't remember who actually got me into Dota. But when I stopped playing console games, I wanted to start playing PC games. I could actually afford a PC. I was in my 30s. And um, I decided to play Dota. I had not heard of League of Legends. I don't know that I would have liked one or the other more um, had I gotten into one of them first. I think Wahujin had a very good kind of explanation the other day on stream where he said that he, you know, he didn't like Dota, but that's because he played League of Legends first. Had he played Dota first, he might have liked that more, right? I think it's one of those exposure things. But I don't know that I had ever heard of League of Legends. And I can't remember who got me into Dota. I want to say it was somebody I was playing. Uh, I played Ultimate Frisbee uh, through most of my 20s. And there was a guy on my team who got me into both Ultimate Frisbee and... Uh, sorry, uh, to both Dota and Dungeons and & Dragons. That was around the time I kind of started doing things that weren't just me being um, outside and physical. Um, the, the introvert in me started to grow. Um, around that time i think and and so i started playing dota and oh you know what i, I have to pause we actually he got me into starcraft first and then we expanded it i expanded into that so that's what it was it wasn't dota it was starcraft uh that the guy got me into and we would play again you know 2v2 3v3 type of um starcraft games and again i never played it competitively i never got into starcraft to see if i could rank up or, or whatever um how good could i get how could i go through you know you know why can't i cannon rush these guys all the way to gold you know what i mean um i never i'm pretty sure i played ranked or comp or whatever um and i think i ended up like playing once and getting silver and just being like okay cool and then i never went back to it um uh type of deal but then from there I expanded into Dota, and that wasn't that friend of mine, uh, Ron. It wasn't it wasn't that uh, that friend that got me into Dota. I actually can't remember. I wonder if I came across it on Twitch or something. Was watching it being played and thought it would be fun to to play. Um, but I started playing Dota, and I actually wanted to. Um, figure out Dota. That was the first game I played that I wanted to figure out. And it was very hard. I never played a MOBA. I was terrible at StarCraft. So there was um, I, there was no top-down type of history for me. Um, but I played. I actually played over a thousand games of Dota. I don't think I played a thousand competitive games. I think I played a thousand total games. Um, and I calibrated crusader i think it was yeah it was crusader one and i did the same thing i did in starcraft i was like okay cool like i'd like to know more but i never actually wanted to 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 solo queue i wanted to play with somebody else um which ended up being a problem because i, I played support and if i played with somebody else it was probably going to be a carry and i was definitely duo crutching uh, whenever I played with somebody, even in, in the unrated games. And it just became one of those things that the I just couldn't wrap my head around it. And I had people that I could talk to. I had people I could ask questions about and whatnot. And I ended up learning things like animation canceling. Um, so like imagine like me in my late 30s realizing that there's a component to video games that is to cast a spell and then cancel the animation before the spell ends so you could cast another spell uh, or whatever the terminology is um that had never occurred to me and I, and I got this impression that um playing games was 
about who could do things faster, but not about who could do things more efficiently. And I think that that was, that never occurred to me, that efficiently thing. And I was, you know, I'm this, again, I'm in my 30s, so, you know, take it for what it's worth. But I'm like, yeah, how, why can't I do this just as fast as anybody else can? Like, I had that um, inability to see uh, whether or not, why well, inability to see why, um, I wasn't going to get better without doing these things. And I remember having a conversation with Wahujin about this, that, uh, when I played sports, it didn't matter what the sport was, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, ultimate Frisbee, all of them, even cross country. I could look across at the person I was competing against and I could tell why I was or wasn't, uh, beating them. Um, they're faster than me. They're bigger than me. They're stronger than me. They can jump higher than me, right? They're, they can throw better than me. You know, like you can physically see those things. But with a video game, it's a digital representation of, of somebody. So if I'm in Dota and I'm playing uh, Crystal Maiden and the other person, the support on the other team is playing Crystal Maiden and they're, they're just outplaying me, um, I don't know why. Like I, I, I could not wrap my head around this person having better timing or positioning or, um, you know, the turn radius, right? Control of their agent, uh, being able to look at different places on the map while still controlling their age, their character, their hero, um, the ability to do something just half a second faster, two hundred times is always going to outplay me. And at that time, I just, I couldn't get it. And I, it actually Dota frustrated me a lot because, because of that. And that goes to it. I started, as I started to learn that, um, I knew that I couldn't play um, a carry, right, hero. I knew I couldn't play mid, not long-term. I'm sure that I could have played it up to a point. So like be 100% clear about that. But unless I learned those nuances, those efficiencies, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to play, um, uh, I would call it a fast twitch agent, right? For lack of a better term, fast twitch agent. Um, I wasn't going to be able to do those, not in my 30s, not in my late 30s. Um, but that leads me to, there was a, uh, there was a guy um, who was in a Dota server that I was in. There's a couple of guys who was in a Dota server that I was in. And one day they were like, you guys want to play Valorant? And that was the first time I'd actually heard of Valorant. Um, we queued up and we tried to play. I actually was having an issue with Vanguard. It was kicking me out of Valorant um, every five minutes or something crazy. It was even probably faster than that. And it got super frustrating. Um, I ended up uninstalling it because the game was unplayable and I couldn't figure it out. I went back to Dota. And then I want to say it was probably like six months later. Uh, I hadn't played Dota in probably two or months or so at that point, and I figured I would give Valorant another shot. Um, the agents, the abilities with the agents, it was a first-person shooter, which, again, I had enjoyed in my past. Um, I understood the mechanics of, you know, uh, you know T-sided, CT-sided from my days playing Counter-Strike back in the day, but... Um, I knew nothing else about the game really and went back, re-downloaded it, figured out why Vanguard was causing a problem, uh, fixed that, and uh, I started playing and I decided I was going to move on from Dota at that point. And it was purely on a on a whim from being tired of, of Dota. And what I ultimately did was I uh, started playing it and I decided when I first started playing it that this would actually be the first time that I wanted to get better at something. Like I wanted to play it, understand it fully, and uh, and go play it. Oh, I want to go back real quick. So there was something, and I know this isn't 100% true, but in Dota, it was probably 500, 600 games in before somebody had come up with a way, and it was uh, BSJ, um, who did this like pseudo flow chart. And he talked about how the first tower you want to try to take, again, depending on your comp and depending on other things, but generally the first tower you want to try to take is the enemy team's safe lane tier one. Um, 
And then the second one would be this the mid lane tier one. Um, if you played an a, a hero where you could take a tower quick, like a Dragonite or you know or something, um, take the tier two first, but then you want to go try to take the tier one in the safe lane. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Take the mid tier one first, and then you want to go take the the off lane, um, your off lane, their safe lane, tier one. If that's confusing to people. I apologize, but anyway, there was this flowchart that kind of like opened up, and you actually want to not group up and attack the enemy team's off lane tier one because it doesn't open up um, jungle camps. It doesn't open up your economy. And when he walked like through those things, like, oh, that makes so much sense. There's a high level macro game that I can use as a baseline. So I bring that up because that was, you know, 500, 600 games in. And I just felt like I had wasted my time trying to learn position five um, without that information. Because you go in solo queue, you, queue, you end up with four other people on your team. And it's literally like, it's awful. It's the blind leading the blind. The person who has the most experience probably is the best person. And they're telling everybody to do the thing that they want to do. Anyway, everybody knows it's, it can get toxic and get you know, whatever. So I was getting tired of that. And the fact that it took in that, taking that long for somebody to just go, yeah, like by default, just try to go get the say, enemy safe lane tier one. Like that's such a good thing to tell people at a lower rank. Um, and then explain it. Just it opens up your opportunity for neutral camps. That's all. That's really the main thing. Keep the waves pushed in, right? There's there's a whole other a whole other aspect to it, but just that one little piece of information would have been nice to know what we were fighting for, um, even if our team was not good enough to go do those things. So I I digress a little bit, but I think that that really bothered me that that was not something that was put out early enough um, for a game that had been out that long. In I watched a lot of people the same way that I did kind of did with Valorant. Um, I watched a lot of people. I watched BSJ. I watched Purge, um, Jenkins, you know, when they were Dota, Alchemy. Uh, and I loved all those. They're all great. They were very, very good at explaining things. Um, I wasn't going to pay for coaching um, at such a low rank because I didn't think it was necessary. But for that to not come out for that much amount of time for me playing was extremely frustrating. I switched over to Valorant, started playing Valorant because I think the objectives are a lot more obvious. You need to get the spike down. You need to protect the spike or you need to prevent the spike from getting down. You need to defuse the spike. Um, they're a, a lot more intuitive from that perspective. I don't want to say that first person shooters are less strategic i don't think that that's true it's a different kind of strategy um, especially since you get multiple rounds to attempt to do something dodo is very in league of legends is very once the game starts you get one chance at laning phase um, you get one chance at mid round or um, mid game you get one chance at late game if you mess those things up i mean give or take of course you can attack and come back and reset or whatever but if you get far enough ahead in economy and you don't make mistakes the game is essentially over um because you can you can absorb the whole map um valorant has this um half time you switch and your economy starts over and you have an opportunity to right that's why the 93 curse kind of is this meme because if you can do it on defense on your side we can do it on defense uh, when it's our turn and um it's a different game it's the difference between soccer and football um football and football it's a difference between um football um where the game is 45 minutes halftime 45 minutes and it's non-stop and you're um you're probing you're moving the ball around you're trying to control possession you're trying to attack the the penalty box you're trying you're trying to to do these things. Um, uh, whereas football, American football, it's you play it down, you reset, you play it down, you reset, you play it down, you reset. And yes, the game changes, the, the strategy changes over the course of the game, but I get four downs to get a first down so that I can then reset. 
uh, I get four downs to get a first down, then I can then reset. And it was one of those things where I really, it took a little bit to figure it out, like Wahujin eventually explained it in one of his videos for me. But first round pistols, you lose pistols, you're on eco, um, and then you get to do a full buy on the third round. But if you're on the other side of that, you first round pistols, second round, you have an economic advantage. You can buy Spectres or a Bulldog or whatever you might be able to buy. But then if you win round two, you're on bonus and you automatically because again you don't want to buy up or whatever the strategies are around that i won't try to go into that because i know i won't explain it very well but that third round if you win the first two rounds you're on eco and you should do something that is advantageous for an economic disadvantage um shorter range guns you want to try to fight the the close range right you don't want to go pearl b um, be long um, when you have an economic disadvantage. Um, they have better guns, you're going to probably die because they have better guns. So it's one of those things where I kind of, I understood that a little bit better, um, that you get other chances, you get multiple chances, and you can try to read and adapt to it. I never understood that in Dota. I never understood how you can fall behind and not force things um i just never, it never i never got it so that's one of the reasons i switched i picked valorant because i really like that one time i got a chance to play with the, the dodo friends and kind of went and picked it up um after figuring that out so that's i mean ultimately that's kind of how i got from the little kid who played you know the original mario brothers again i think it was the original mario brothers all the way to how I became a 40 year old who was playing Valorant. Um, and that's kind of my gaming story, um, as it were. I think that I would leave off there with also, I've had a habit of wanting my games to feel real. Real is not the right word, right? I don't like real is not the right word, but I don't know that I can figure out a, a good opportunity, a good word to use. But the, the way I'll explain that is when I played Madden. Um, I didn't want to cheese Madden by putting whatever a wide receiver at running back and playing or wide receiver at quarterback and playing um wildcat formation and just outrunning everybody, right? I, I didn't want to find the play that was broken um and just do that over and over again, right? So I kind of point that out because I had this huge disadvantage when it came to playing competitively. And that's one of the reasons I didn't like playing competitively is I didn't want to find the again you call it cheesing right you call it cheesing but every sport you play you play to win within the rules um that's how i played every sport that i ever played but i never approached video games that way and that was a major um i'll, I'll call it weakness i'll call it flaw in my approach it to getting better at at games um i don't know how i Again, the, the reason real is not the right word is like, how do you, how is Dota real? How is Valorant real, right? You know, Phoenix can't throw fire from his hands uh, in real life. So like real is not the right word, but I wanted there to be like, I guess, authenticity to it. Maybe that's a better word. Um, and I never, I never thought of cheesies, cheesy things. I never thought of efficiencies. So playing to find competitive advantages was not something in my wheelhouse. So I wanted to kind of leave on that because we'll go to the next part here, which is um, how I found Wahujin. And the, the I guess the Wahujin item is um, I was picking up Valorant. I had been playing unrated. I unlocked all the agents. I was looking to unlock every agent before I ever played competitive. So that I could figure out who I did and didn't like and what, you know, their abilities and 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 whatnot. And I was actually playing initiator initially. Um, I think I ended with sixty one hours of fade in unrated. Because fade initially was like the agent that I really liked. I also think she was broken at the time, if I remember correctly. Uh, well, yeah, I don't think that there were patches afterwards. I know that they had recently nerfed her. And I think I was playing her when she was super strong. Um, the her dogs were, you know, you, 
you could never shoot him or whatever. It was plainer when she was strong, but there was something about the recon, uh, the eye, that allowed me to, um, I don't know, I guess at the level I was playing at, which was essentially silver and moat gold, um, that uh, just that vision was super broken because I had uh, like a 60% win rate or something crazy with fade and un uh, unrated, knowing that it's unrated and all those other caveats. Um, and then I went and I played um, my, my, I calibrated at silver one. I promptly lost like four or five games in D rank to bronze three, played one more game, went back to silver one and stopped playing. <laughs> like I immediately is like pump the brakes. I'm not going to do this anymore. I don't know enough to understand why this is like, why I'm not doing well. And because I was starting to take it seriously, I started to go and look and listen to different coaches. So I actually did listen to Joel's. I listened to OD. Uh, I was watching who else was it? worthy TV. Um, there were a number of people out there that I was uh, watching and listening to and asking questions in chat and, and whatnot. And, and then while watching OD, who I kind of had started with, um, Wahujin was in one of his streams one time, and I actually had not heard of Wahujin. I started watching Wahujin, and the first night that I went and watched Wahujin, um, um, you know, put it out there. This is a little sad, but um, uh, but uh, we had just put down uh, one of our dogs who we did not expect to. He ended up having cancer, it caught us off guard, and we put uh, we had put him down. Um, that night, though, I dis I was actually already deciding to go watch Wahujin at one point. And that night, I just didn't feel like doing anything. And I kind of went to Twitch and Wahujin was on and I popped him on and I started watching him. And if you guys have never seen an old um, Mad Banana episode, um, it, it was fucking hilarious. Like he was not trying to coach. He was... Um, you know, berating. He was joking. He was, uh, he was basically essentially just like, you know, what the fuck are you doing here? Why are you doing this this way? It's just, it was, it was hilarious. It caught me off guard and it was, it really brightened my day. It was funny. Um, and kind of seeing that kind of, this is not what we normally do, but I'm going to mix it up tonight type of thing. Um, really made me like Wujin as a, uh, as a content creator, as a, as a, an instructor, as it were. And I immediately just went to his discord and tier three him. Um, and this is a short part of the segment here. Like it was really that fast. Like I had planned on, on, I've been watching some coaches. I've been absorbing content and I had decided to check out Wahujin one night and it was not a good night for me. And he just made me laugh in my chair. Like I, I could not get enough. He's just, his humor was so funny and he was ex still explaining things in ways that was like, yeah, that makes sense. I, d I really don't know why he would do it that way. And yeah, it was a mad banana segment. So if you ever get a chance to go find his old mad banana, banana stuff, I think they're on YouTube. Hilarious. Just fantastic. Um, I, and I tier three him and, uh, he, he, I was sold. I was, I was going to be, um, coming back to his content, uh, from that point on. All right. Until, until I got bored of it, I guess, technically, right. Just to, in all honesty. Um, and I ha I had, I haven't at this point gotten bored of it. Um, so still hanging around, uh, six months, uh, six months plus later. Right. I think that, uh, May was six months. Um, so I guess the last part of all of this is kind of how Boomer to Diamond got uh, put together, and I'll kind of like put a little caveat out. Like I, I'm I hope I'm doing this justice. If uh, these are my words and my perspective, um, if uh, Wuhujin, you actually check this out or hear this at any at any rate. If I say any of this incorrectly, I I apologize. Like this is just like it's my perspective, and I'm sure I'm going to use the wrong words at some point, but. Anyway, we were, I was in the tier three chat. We were just discussing things, uh, joking around like, like we do in tier three. And um, Wahujin asked the question, hey, what kind of content do you guys want to see? What are some ideas you have? Um, and we were kind of just spitballing, throwing stuff out there. Uh, and a lot of things he's, uh, he's kind of turned into to segments for people. And one of the things that got joked out around about was, you know, Boomer to Radiant. And, and again, I don't know that I put it out there um, or somebody else did. I don't really remember. Um, but I laughed as a gag, you, you know, take a 40 year old to, uh, to radiant. Ha ha ha. 
um, based off of that kind of comment. And he actually pinged me a couple of days later and he was like, is that something you really want to try? And I was like, you know, sure, I'd be down. And he had me kind of um, prove that I could play every day, which is you know, his consistency expectation. Can you play every day for two weeks? Um, give me your tracker. Let's uh, let's test it out. Here's what I want you to do. And if if you can do it, if it's not something that causes you extra stress or family challenges or whatever, then uh, let's try it out and let's do it. And uh, and I was able to do it. Was, I was fully working at home at the time. So I had a little bit less pressure during the day and I could kind of just chill after work without, you know, the drive home and all the other kind of pressures that come with uh, working in the, uh, in the office, going in, going in and coming home every day. Um, and I was able to do it. Like if you hit the uh, exclamation point consistency in Discord today, uh, it'll show a, um, a track of my... Uh, my consistency for both comp and DMs at the time uh, with like one little gap there because we went to Colorado for a weekend. Uh, sorry, not Colorado, Oklahoma for a weekend. Um, so, but if we hadn't gone, it would be a fully red tracker you know, on there. And um, yeah, we started it and I hadn't played um, since, I want to say it was early October because I said, like I said earlier, like I kind of calibrated D rank to D to bronze three and then came back to silver one. So I was a silver one player at the time. And we, you know, I did it. I did the consistency thing and he was like, you know, let's, let's go for it. We'll start off. And he kind of gave me stipulations, right? Um, Play the agents you want to now. We'll kind of figure those things out and, uh, and we'll go from there. And it was the beginning of the new act um, episode five, act three. And I came in, I, you know, I played my game, I'm, I'm silver one, and I was playing Viper Omen. I think it was just Viper Omen, maybe Astra, because uh, it was before he said no Astra. Um, and we, uh, we started from there, and that was the beginning of things. Um, and now we here we are six and a half months later, and I am now Diamond, so... Uh, totally worth it the only thing that's kind of changed between all of that obviously i've gotten better at the game um through all of the uh consistency and the practice and the the pointers and and you know he has an ability to kind of see um what i'm doing and suggest things that um i myself wouldn't suggest to myself um because i'm not thinking about it correctly like there was a period where I was reaching for platinum, plat one rank up, and I was um, not having fun. I was just not having fun playing the game. And we had like kind of a come to Jesus moment about um, if you're not having fun, then you know, there's really no point in doing this. And so we, we look for ways to help me have fun, right? And um, he's, he's done a lot for my competitive spirit um, in that aspect. And uh, it's actually I'm extremely appreciative of, of it. Um, the only thing that's changed outside of that has been I go into work three days a week now. And it makes um, Monday nights and Tuesday nights really hard to feel mentally prepared to play. So my consistency has dropped back to five days a week instead of seven days a week. Um, in terms of playing, I still try to do my practices, um, give or take a sickness or give or take a, a vacation. So, but that's that's all the news that's fit to print as they say um i guess we'll leave it off there i hope this was a fun lore dump a little bit of a long-winded back and forth about kind of my history without hopefully doxing myself um and i hope this was enjoyable and i'd like to do this again in the future so if there are other things you're interested in hearing about, um, uh, different, uh, yeah, lore things, um, why I choose agents, what I like about those agents, even things outside of Valorant. Feel free to ask and we'll uh, sift through them and see what, uh, what I feel like I have enough to talk about on. So I hope you all have a good week. Thank you for hanging out. 
Um, on next week, I think I'm going to do communication. I do want to talk a little bit about communication, some struggling things that I, some struggles that I have with it and uh, what I'm doing about it. It's actually going to be a big part of my uh, growth uh, from Diamond on up. So it's something I do have to fix and hopefully I can um, rationalize and visualize uh, the challenges and the improvements that I need. I think it'll be great. All right. Thank you all. Have a great week and good luck in your games.